I'd like to direct your attention to this oscillation model for El Nino and in the upper right hand corner of the draft right around in here the, as we head into the brunt of winter for 2024 uh, the oscillation models such as this are starting to hint that El Nino may have peaked now and we may yet see some winter weather and better snowpack for skiing so this is what we're going to be looking into for the rest of this presentation. Earlier in our series on weather and in episode 7 we discussed the use of drought monitoring tools to help choose an area of interest for potential as a ski destination. In this episode we are going to look at another tool that the USDA supports that is invaluable in this respect as well. It consists of their Snow Water Equivalent Maps, SWE, and it is an amazing tool for getting an overview of the snowpack conditions in the western USA, parts of Canada, which we can see here, and then moving up into along the coast range for areas of Alaska that you can see here. It isn't really that easy to find this map. You have to drill to get to here. And then you've got to start working over here for perhaps curating some of the defaults in this control panel over on the right hand side, which is your map control panel. We are going to illustrate this as we drill down through this process. And we're going to show some of the initial default values that I'm using so far which will make it easier to get a leg up and potentially give you a head start on fine-tuning the selection of the various parameters. So as you progress with this tool, it'll become more bespoke toward your individual needs. I'm going to start here by going to this home page on the Natural Resources Conservation Service of the USDA's website. And we're going to go to Programs and Initiatives and then we're going to move over here and click on view all programs and initiatives and then we're going to scroll down until we find this link for snow survey we get here and that's the link we're looking for we're going to click on that and then under quick links we are going to click we're going to scroll down and under predefined maps for snow water equivalent and click the stations and basins which is at the very end of this first line under the snow subheader. Give it a minute and now we're getting a map of North America that's populated with basins snow water. So the abbreviation for that is SWE and what we're going to look for is over here on the legend panel on the lower left side what is going to be important for us we're visually going to identify anything in the greens and blue as being potential areas of interest for where we may want to find some snow then what we can do is take maybe existing forecasts for example although i will point out that right now the uh, confidence levels in both the ECMWF and the GFS are pretty low so it's actually causing forecasters some grief and if you're wondering why your local forecaster has been boggling the local forecast for you it's not his fault it's the long-range forecaster having a lot of trouble. Now we're going to focus our attention on this map control panel on the right hand side of the screen. It will really improve data that you're going to get by tweaking some of the values over here in the panel and there are numerous possibilities as you can see here we're not going to be tweaking each and every one of them I'll just be going through what I've been doing so far as an initialization step for getting started with this and as you progress, I'm sure that you'll be able to fine-tune this much better to address your individual needs for the areas that you're interested in and the parameters that you're interested in. On the control panel over here, 
you will probably see that snow water equivalent is already selected and then we are going to go to the percent then we go to frequency which is daily and the time will be end of day and what I like to do is depending on your time of day for example when I'm doing this right now what earlier this morning when I clicked go to now it didn't give me the shaded areas if that's what happens to you because of the time of day then regress by one day so for example today my day is January 4th so the end of day for yesterday is now being populated but a couple of hours ago when I did this at 7 in the morning I didn't get the color-coded basin charts that's just the the one uh, heads up for you on that one then we are going to move down to uh, the basin type I have chosen the six digit HUC basin type of interest to you uh, may be such things as down here your map layers and your overlays but if you choose too many of these options graph over here can get pretty busy looking and but in the long run things like the elevation parameter might come in handy for you but you can see that you may want to wait until you've drilled down into an area of interest before you start using things like that because look how busy it gets when you select that so let's uh, imagine for example that we're sitting somewhere such as New York or London or wherever she who must be obeyed says to you that uh, honey I want to go on a ski holiday in a few weeks. There's been a dearth of snow in most of North America so far this winter, and we're talking right now, I'm in the beginning of 2024. You turn to this map, and what your eye is seeking is any of these colors from, uh, my cursor, by the way, is over here on the left side in the snow water equivalent legend panel and I'm looking for these color codes that will represent snow water equivalent anywhere from 90 percent up to uh, greater than or equal 150 percent which is the dark blue and so I'm going to discount the yellow the amber the red immediately my eye may go over the highest I can find here right now with a quick look is uh, looks to be about New Mexico in northwest side of the state where there's a hundred and eleven percent and so I'm going to just drill down on to that and now I've got a much better view of those parts of New Mexico and now I'm going to see if I can find some ski areas and I recall that when I was younger um, I had some pretty good skiing around Taos so um, maybe that's an area that I would be trying to focus on and see if I can get some more information on there so if I drill down on to New Mexico as it turns out I know you've got to drive north and go through Santa Fe in order to get to Taos and look what happens as soon as you get north of Santa Fe it would appear that the average snow water equivalent of that area is 71 percent as opposed to the 111 percent for further south around Albuquerque let's just get a little more granular here and see what we can find out about this basin here's Taos and here now if you click on this area first of all the circles are representing some of the data collection points the color codes will represent some of the data that you can get and the median value for that area for example at Hopewell 10,100 feet the median value for the period of 1991 to 2020 is 49 percent and then let's go over here and uh, at Powderhorn we are at 11,000 feet we're looking at uh, 56 percent of the median value 
So what happens if we go and click on the area right on Taos? It will give us the snow water equivalent for the upper Rio Grande area. And we're seeing 71%, which corresponds to the overall value for that basin. What I'm going to direct your attention to now is this pop-up window. Down below, if we want to expand on the stations, you can use that to get some observational values for those individual stations. And then you can hover over the dots and track them down such as this one at 10,000 feet and with a median value of uh, 50 percent and then you can go back up here and see the corresponding values for that and then go over here in Chimita at 8,000 just over 8,000 feet and we've got a 64 percent median value so those are some of the things you can do with a number of stations so it shows you the number of stations that you can get here. You can collapse that and then go to things like your parameters. And this is for the overall stats for the basin. You can export those if you want to get more granular. But right now I want to know how this general basin area looks compared to all the previous years. So again, I want the uh, median values and this chart does give you uh, a pretty nice and quick overview where the solid black line is the median for all the sites and you can compare them to median for all those sites for this much longer see how that compares to the green line the black line and the green line are probably the two most important that you want to focus on here and you can see here you're not up to the median value as of now at the beginning of 2024 i may not expect the best skiing of my life in that area however given local conditions as we've seen for some of the stations ranging between 50 and 90 percent it doesn't mean that you can't find good skiing there especially if you're good at picking your terrain you're good at finding the differences between where you've got innovational snow de depositions and you want to find powder in those areas you have to factor all these factors in when you're making your decisions and if you're a recreational skier who goes downhill for a couple times a year on a ski vacation then perhaps this at least is going to indicate that you can expect something of decent value in terms of a holiday and the fact that you're not dropping the black line into the red area might mean that you can get a totally acceptable vacation by going and skiing in Taos and now let's just look at some of the other areas that are further south uh, for comparison. Of course we know that uh, the problem with uh, a large part of New Mexico is desert and so you really do need to focus on where the mountains are at with respect to skiing and for that you're, you are going to have to head up north. So uh, Santa Fe there are a few areas around there anywhere from Parito to uh, Angel Fire Resort. That's when you could start looking at those, I mean 169% of the median in that area is uh, sounding pretty promising. 107% just not far from there. So you can really see how the regional differences but that are dictated by such things as winds and aspect and so on can really have an influence on what you're going to find if you did hit that. Then you need to just go to the ski maps of the areas you're interested in, find out what ski areas they're in, and then for example Perito, uh, Santa Fe, Ski Santa Fe site, and then Angel Fire which has apparently been receiving, well look at over here, three inches in the last 24 hours. So I'm guessing that the snowfall there is pretty decent. And then uh, zoom out a little bit, look for some more colors, and then we see this 92% green here, which is about the next best that we're seeing here. I think there is probably some potential to consider places like 
these areas in Idaho. So now you've gotten the idea of how to try and seek out some areas of potential for your next vacation. And then if we take something like um, the long range forecast and apply it to perhaps this area, then we might have the potential to do a little bit of better perspective planning for where you may want to head. Before I committed myself to any uh, given area and if I hadn't booked a flight yet, I think looking at this map from 60,000 feet, my eye would gravitate over to the blue and I would then bring the blue up and zoom in on it and uh, of course it means then we might be considering a flight to Alaska. Well, it would appear to me that we are going to find something outside of Anchorage. Alaska Resort is about uh, just a little less than an hour drive away. What have we got here? We've got Mount Alaska, which is near the resort. And it looks like they've got 142% of the median value of snow. And so if we look at that graph and we compare the black line, and where it falls in the colors, it looks like we are now above the green line. Which I would then go and maybe have a look at some of no planner reports, compare them to the plot and see what we've got, and then also take a look at some of the cams. Plan for maybe the most memorable ski vacation of your life by curating the area you're going to go to through some of these tools that you can stick in your back pocket. If something like that really did work out for you and you use those, I would be uh, very ecstatic to hear about it. Some of these values would be very lucrative and you can see here for example that the median for 20-year median is going to be 142 percent of the average. So that does look uh, fairly lucrative from this standpoint and I would be seriously considering a trip to Alaska if I was planning my ski vacation.